Nightingale is a story by Hans Christian Andersen, who was writing in the 1800s. He was a Danish author and poet. A long, long time ago in China, the emperor lived in a beautiful porcelain palace. All of the walls and floors were porcelain and you had to walk very, very carefully because the palace was so delicate, but so beautiful. People all over the world had heard of the emperor's porcelain palace. Attached to the palace was a beautiful garden. There were all sorts of beautiful flowers of all types and colors all throughout the garden. The most beautiful of the flowers even had tiny silver bells tied on to the flowers. That way if you walked by the wind that you made when you walked by would gently rustle the flowers and the little bell would tinkle. So you would know that there was something beautiful and you would stop and look. At the far end of this beautiful garden by the porcelain palace, there was a wood that looked out over the sea. Now in this wood, there were lots of creatures that lived, but one of the creatures that lived there was the nightingale who loved to sing. The nightingale sang so beautifully that anyone who heard the nightingale sing would stop and listen. Now, the wood that looked out over the sea was so close to the water that fishermen could bring their boats right up to the very edge of the forest and they could hear the nightingale singing and the nightingale sang so beautifully that even though the fishermen had so much work that they needed to do, they would lay down their nets and just listen to the nightingale sing and sway with the water on their boats. Now one fisherman in particular was so enchanted by the nightingale that he told everyone he knew about the nightingale. So when he traveled around to other places, he told them about the nightingale. And soon, stories of the nightingale had made it all the way around the world. Everybody knew about this wonderful singing bird in the emperor's garden. One day, the emperor received a book as a present from the emperor of Japan. The emperor was reading his book, sitting in his gold chair. He was reading all about how very wonderful his porcelain palace was. It was the most beautiful palace in the entire world. He was reading about how beautiful his gardens were how many flowers there were, and how the gold tinkling bells would let you know when you were passing by a particularly beautiful blossom. And he was reading about the woods at the end of his property with the nightingale. The emperor had never heard of the nightingale. He had no idea what that book was talking about. So he called in his top advisor. The top advisor came quickly to the emperor's side. He was, you know, a little bit full of himself. He was a little bit snooty. And he said, yes, emperor, what can I do for you? And the emperor said, I want to hear about this nightingale. I, I've never heard of it and it is apparently one of the most wonderful things in my empire. And I had to read about it in a book. I should know of this nightingale firsthand. And the advisor said, Well, your emperorness, I have never heard of this nightingale either. It has never been presented at court. Are you sure that it's real? And the emperor said, Well, of course it's real. It's written in my book. It must be real. I demand that you find this nightingale immediately, and if you do not get me this nightingale, I will feed the entire court 
an extremely large dinner and then punch everybody in the stomach. Well, the top advisor certainly did not want that. And so he went all over the court asking everybody he knew if they could find the nightingale. Well, no one in the court had ever heard of the nightingale. They almost never left the beautiful porcelain palace. So he went back to the emperor and said, well, no one has heard of this nightingale. And the emperor said, stop, I will start ordering dinner now. And the top advisor said, wait, I have not asked everyone. And so he scurried out. And then he started asking members of the court that were not members of the court. He started off in the kitchen asking the head cook if he had ever heard of the nightingale. And he said, no, he'd never heard of the nightingale either. But a little kitchen maid overheard. And she said, excuse me, um, I believe I have heard of the nightingale. I take food scraps to my mother um, every, every week and I walk through the forest to get to her house and uh, I hear the nightingale sing. I could take you to her if you would like. And the top of us is perfect, perfect. Let's go right away. Here we go. And so the little kitchen maid and the top advisor set out and they walked through the garden with all the beautiful flowers and the tinkling bells and they made it to the woods. And right when they got to the woods, they heard a cow low. And, and the top advisor said, ah! That must be it. I think I've heard it before. Quick, let us get the nightingale. And the little kitchen maid said, no, 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 that, that is not the nightingale, sir. That, that is a cow. And the top advisor said, yes, of course, I knew that. Carry on. And as they walked further through the forest, they came across a pond. And in the pond, there were all sorts of frogs going, ribbit. And the top advisor said, huh? I hear the nightingale now. Sounds just like the chiming of bells. And the little kitchen maid said, no, no, sir. Those are frogs. That's not the nightingale. But I think we're getting close. And they walked further through the woods. And soon, the top advisor heard the most beautiful singing coming through the trees. And he said, aha, that must be the nightingale. And the little kitchen maid called out, nightingale, nightingale, the emperor wants you to come sing. And the bird flew down to where the top advisor was sitting. And the top advisor leaned over to the kitchen maid and said, my, that is quite a plain bird. She must have lost all of her color from seeing all of the important people in the court. Unfazed, the nightingale said, Why, Emperor, I would be honored to sing for you. And she sang the most beautiful song the top advisor had ever heard. When she was finished, the top advisor said, That is excellent. The Emperor will be very, very pleased. You must come with me. And the nightingale was a little bit confused. She said, well, I will come with you, but really my song sounds much better out here in the open. And the top advisor told her that she simply must come with. So she did, because the nightingale loved the emperor and would do anything for the emperor. That evening, the emperor held a grand party to celebrate the nightingale singing. All of the members of the court were there and all were very impressed by the nightingale song. So the emperor said, Nightingale, you must live with me in the palace. Your songs are so beautiful and the whole world knows about you. So you must live here. You will have people to attend to your every need. Well, the nightingale didn't like this very much, but 
while she was singing, someone had attached a silk leash onto her foot. So she had no choice but to stay and sing. And she loved the emperor, so she stayed and sang every day. Well, one day, the emperor got a box. And on the outside of the box was labeled Nightingale. And the emperor thought that it was a box um, containing a book all about his beautiful nightingale because he knew that the nightingale was famous all the way around the world. But when he opened up the box, it wasn't a book. It was a beautiful, jeweled, mechanical bird. There were emeralds down its wings and rubies across its collar and its beak was pure gold. And when you wound it up, it sang one of the real Nightingale's songs so perfectly that everyone was astounded. And the Emperor said, quick, bring in the real Nightingale. They must sing a duet. But when the real Nightingale came in to sing with the mechanical bird, it wasn't quite perfect because the Nightingale sang its own song. But the music masters all said that the mechanical bird sang it perfectly. It had perfect time and perfect meter, and it hit all of the perfect notes. And it was much prettier to look at. So they played the mechanical bird song again, and again, and again. They played it 33 times. And the court would have heard it 34 times, but the emperor said, no, 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 I would like to hear the real Nightingale's song. Nightingale, it is your turn to sing. But where had the Nightingale gone? While everyone was listening to the mechanical bird, the Nightingale had flown out through the window and back to her woods. At first, the emperor was very sad, but he had this other beautiful mechanical bird to listen to, and as everyone pointed out, it was so much more beautiful than the gray bird had been. A year went by, and no one ever grew tired of listening to the mechanical nightingale's song. But then, one day, the emperor got very sick, and he lay down in bed, and all he could bring himself to do was listen to the mechanical bird's song over and over. He felt so ill. But one time when he was listening to the song, the bird was singing along, then all of a sudden he heard it go snap. And it stopped singing. And the emperor, he was so sick. And he just wanted to listen to his song, so he called for the veterinarian. And the veterinarian came in and told him that he was so sorry, but the bird was mechanical. There was nothing he could do. You should try and uh, call the music masters. And the music masters, they all came in, but they didn't know anything about mechanics, so they couldn't help either. Finally, the emperor called in a watchmaker, and the watchmaker was able to fix all of the bird's delicate cogs and small parts, but he warned the emperor that the mechanical bird would wear out again. Now, the emperor got sicker and sicker because he was only happy when he was listening to the bird's song, and now he couldn't listen to the bird over and over anymore. And so, he was laying in bed and big tears rolled down his cheeks. He was so sad. And then, in popped the nightingale, the real one, in his window. And she said, oh, Emperor, why are you so sad? And the Emperor explained, oh, I am feeling so sick. And this mechanical bird used to sing to make me feel better. But now she cannot sing. And I wish that you could come sing me a song. And the nightingale said, Oh, Emperor, I love you so much. I do not want you to be sick. And so she sang the most beautiful song. And it was not the same song with the mechanical bird. 
and the emperor felt rejuvenated and healthy. And he said, thank you, thank you for singing to me. Would you please come stay with me again in the palace? And the nightingale said, no, 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 I cannot stay with you in the palace. I love being in the woods, but I love you as well. I promise that I will come and sing to you when I have new songs for you. And the emperor said, new songs? And the nightingale said, yes. Yes, I fly around everywhere and I hear songs from all over, but you have to promise that when you know everything that goes on in your empire, you have to promise that you won't tell anybody that a little bird told you all of your secrets. 